Today's story is of Thomas and Jackie Hawks. Thomas Hawks was born on January 1st, 1947. Thomas grew up to become a wrestler of sorts. He was very fit and would work out every day, even up into his 50s. He received a scholarship for his wrestling to attend Chapman University, but turned it down in order to join the Air Force. He went on to fight in the Vietnam War. He returned from the war and started night school and became a firefighter. Thomas then met a woman named Dixie. They had two children, Ryan and Matt. Over time, Dixie and Thomas's love fizzled out and the two split up. Thomas then moved to Prescott, Arizona to start his new life. His kids, Ryan and Matt, eventually came to move in with Thomas in Arizona where he taught them about life. One day, down in Arizona, some of Thomas's friends invited him to the Fireman's Chili Cook-Off event. That's where he met Jackie. She sat in a wheelchair while making the rounds of his party, talking to all of the guests. She was a bright light, and everyone in town loved her. At the Chili Cook-Off, Thomas was drawn to Jackie immediately and spent the evening as well as the following weeks getting to know as much as he could about Jackie. They were smitten and became inseparable. Eventually, Jackie moved in with Thomas. Thomas and Jackie then got married in their backyard. With time, the boys grew up and went out into the world, and then it was just Thomas and Jackie. They had been hard workers their whole life. Their dream was to purchase a boat and travel and live on the water. They bought a 55-foot boat and named it Well Deserved. Thomas and Jackie traveled around the West Coast. They went all over Mexico, up the coast of California, to their favorite spot of Catalina Island. They were living the life. But after a while, one of Thomas's kids started a family of his own. He was married with a baby on the way, so Thomas and Jackie thought it was maybe time to give up the boat and move back to Arizona to be close to the family. They were very, very excited to become grandparents. They decided to sell the boat in Newport Beach, California. Thomas did not go through a boat broker, and instead he was selling the boat directly himself. He was selling the boat for $435,000. A young couple expressed interest in the boat. The couple was Skylar DeLeon and Jennifer Henderson. They were really, really young in their 20s. It seemed odd for a couple that young to be able to afford such a nice boat like the well-deserved, but Skylar reassured them that they had the money because Skylar was once a child actor. Skylar was most well known for their part of Roger on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. In addition to that, they had some real estate business down in Mexico. Skylar and Jennifer took a look at the boat and were infatuated with it. The well-deserved was perfect for their needs and exactly what they were looking for. They were pretty much ready to seal the deal, but they just wanted to take the boat out on a sea trial, a pretty standard procedure when purchasing a boat. If all went well in the sea trial, Skylar would purchase the boat in cash. They even asked if they paid extra, if they could keep some of the extra things on board, like surfboards, fishing rods, anchors, and all of that good stuff. Thomas and Jackie were delighted with this offer. They made a plan to take the couple out to Catalina Island for the sea trial. It would also be a nice last hurrah for Thomas and Jackie to visit their favorite spot one last time before selling the boat. So on November 15th, 2004, they embarked on their venture to Catalina. On the boat was Thomas, Jackie, Skylar, a pregnant Jennifer, their child, and their friends, John Kennedy and Alonzo McChain. Off they went. But after the November 15th sea trial, Thomas and Jackie were never seen again. The boat had returned home to its slip in Newport, but Thomas and Jackie were nowhere to be found. Their car was missing as well. Their family couldn't get a hold of them, which was very unlike them, but they thought maybe they were just enjoying themselves and celebrating after the sale and that they'd turn up in a few days. Thanksgiving came and went, and Thomas and Jackie were still missing. By this time, the family knew something must be really wrong. On November 27, 2004, Thomas's son contacted the Newport Police Department to file a missing persons report. The police searched the boat, but there was no hard evidence found leading to their disappearance. But they did find a Target receipt from the Hawks' credit card with some interesting purchases made. They had purchased bleach and heavy-duty trash bag. The authorities went to retrieve security footage from the Target store where they discovered not Thomas or Jackie or Skylar or Jennifer purchasing these items, 
but a man who turned out to be a member of Skylar de Leon's family. But obviously, the new boat owners Skylar and Jennifer were suspects number one. On December 16th, the police arrested Skylar for money laundering charges in relation to the sale of the boat, well deserved. They bought Skylar in for questioning and they told the authorities the sea trial went well, that they handed them over the cash and then Thomas and Jackie left in their car. Skylar even provided documentation proof of the sale of the boat. The police asked how they could afford such a costly boat. Skylar mentioned their days on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but they also said Jennifer was the breadwinner of the family as she was a hairdresser. But this didn't seem to add up to the police. Something was fishy. And they never mentioned Jennifer being the breadwinner to Thomas and Jackie. To Thomas and Jackie, Skylar said it was all them. The police pressed on further and Skylar admitted to having some sketchy business dealings down in Mexico. Not real estate, but trafficking and drug dealing, which is how they could afford the boat. So Skylar just admitted to a felony to the cops, but the police had no proof of this other than Skylar's word. A few weeks after the incident, Skylar and Jennifer tried to access Thomas and Jackie's bank accounts. This is when the police learned that the Hawks had granted them permission and power of attorney. This means that even though the Hawks had just met this couple, they gave them permission to have total control over all of their finances. Why would they do that? Skylar said that this was because they had real estate business down in Mexico and Skylar was going to help them with purchasing some property down there. This was super sketchy and Thomas's kids were like, there's no way they would grant this permission to total strangers. That just doesn't add up. But there was not enough sufficient evidence against Skylar or Jennifer to officially book them. At some point, the Hawks' missing vehicle was located down in Mexico and being used by a man who said the car was given to him as a gift by none other than Skylar de Leon. Thomas and Jackie were still nowhere to be found. The police bring Skylar back in for questioning. They finally were able to get a search warrant for Skylar's apartment. While searching the apartment, they found an application to have a gender reassignment surgery. And Skylar's name was filled out on the form and Jennifer had signed off on the form. They also found a business card for an LAPD detective. They contacted the person from the business card and found out that Skylar was a suspect in another murder case. Skylar was a suspect for the killing of John Jarvie, who was found on the side of the road down in Mexico. The connection between John Jarvie and Skylar? They were once prison roommates. By the beginning of 2005, one of the other passengers on board the well-deserved the day of the sea trial, friends of Skylar and Jennifer, eventually came forward and were brought in for questioning. That person was Alonzo Machain. It turns out that Alonzo worked at the prison where Skylar and John Jarvie had stayed. McChain backed up Skylar's story completely. Then the police went to the notary who helped with the official sale of the boat. She said she never met Thomas or Jackie and Skylar had paid the notary an additional $2,000 to backdate the day of the sale and to do it without the Hawks present. But they never told her why. Finally, there's enough evidence against Skylar to arrest them. The Hawks vehicle that Skylar stole, the faulty sale with the notary, and now three possible murder victims. The police went back to Alonzo Machain with the notary evidence to see if he would stick to the story. Alonzo came forward with the truth. He said he became friends with Skylar when he was in jail. Once he was out, Skylar went to him with a job with a big payout of a million dollars if he could help them with the sale of this boat and kill the Hawkses. Alonzo then told them what happened that day at sea. He said that Skylar asked to see the instrument panel. When they went below deck, Skylar tasered Thomas and Jackie. Alonzo, Skylar, and John Kennedy then blindfolded them and handcuffed them. They brought them up on the deck and one by one forced them to sign documents stating that Skylar had purchased the boat. Once that was completed, they dragged Thomas and Jackie on the deck, duct taped them, and tied them up to one of the boat anchors threw it overboard, along with the Hawkses. Alonzo said that Jennifer was not there when the Hawkses died, but she was aware and knew of the situation. She would call frequently and ask for updates. In March and April of the same year, 2005, Skylar, Jennifer, Machain, and Kennedy were officially arrested for the killings of Thomas and Jackie Hawks. In November, 2006, 
the De Leons were officially charged with first degree murder. Jennifer was tried separately and alone. Her defense team tried to blame the whole thing on Skylar, but they were unsuccessful with this attempt. Not only did the phone record show that she was in contact with Skylar that day, but Alonzo also went on the stand and confessed to the court what Jennifer's role was in all of this. It was said that everyone in the courtroom that day had tears in their eyes as they listened to Alonzo's play-by-play -play of what happened. But Jennifer was the only one there who was not crying and showed no remorse. The court finally found her guilty. She was convicted of two counts of first degree murder. Then later, she was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. The court wanted to give Skylar the death penalty for committing double homicide for his own financial gain, but the court case dragged on for a long time. In 2008, the jury officially decided to give Skylar the death penalty. Skylar is in prison in San Quentin, California. John Kennedy, also was supposed to be given the death penalty. Alonzo was sentenced to 20 years in prison since he came forward with the real story. That was a crazy intense story. My heart goes out to the Hawks family. They were good people who were just trying to sell their boat to move back to be closer to their family and be grandparents. It's awful that they got tangled up in Skylar and Jennifer DeLeon's mess. I'm glad everyone is behind bars for life and is unable to continue to harm innocent people. That's all I have for you today. Stay safe out there, y'all. This is Lindsay, and thanks for watching Killer Bites.